Well, concerns have been raised about the ongoing spate of gender-based violence in schools. Last month, the South African Council for Educators briefed the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education on Sexual Misconduct in Schools. So according to the Council, 64 cases of misconduct or sexual misconduct at schools were reported between April 1st and June 30, 2021. At the same time, the council says there are challenges in bringing perpetrators to account. So let's speak more about that matter with George Muraswi, who is an ethics and legal affairs manager at the South African Council for Educators about this issue. George, thank you so much for your, uh, your, your time this evening. Let's talk a little bit about the issue around the challenges of, being, of bringing perpetrators to book. Is it true that one of the reasons why we are seeing hardly any accountability, especially where the perpetrator is the educator, is because the parents of the children are protecting the perpetrator. All right, George, I'm going to ask you just to unmute for us so we can continue the conversation. Thank you, and good evening uh, to you, and good evening to the viewers. Good evening, George. I, I can confirm with certainty what you have just said, because I personally, together with my team, deal with uh, these cases. And indeed, parents are our biggest problem uh, in this equation. Mm. We receive complaints. Some of them are from the very parents. We investigate the complaints. We may find evidence of uh, wrongdoing on the part of an educator but come the time to prosecute these cases parents would be the first ones to say no we no longer want to proceed with these cases this is outside the learners who may let us down but uh, the biggest problem in the equation is the parents because so, we need their yeah. Uh, parent, we need parental consent yeah. for these because they are minors. For them to, for the learners to testify, we need parental consent. However, we've been let down on many occasions by the very parents. So, when you're saying that you've been let down on many occasions by the parents, why are parents letting you down as the council in bringing the perpetrators of their children to book? That's a great question as to why are they backtracking on their uh, reports. We came to the realization that much as certain things you cannot prove, we, you can see when money has exchanged hands, we get to see, we get to know, we cannot prove it. Because the very parents, it has happened on some occasions where in a parent would withdraw a case mm. months down the line the very parent will come back to you and or to say is to say that we made a mistake i think i made a mistake in the past i want to proceed when you re-enroll the matter days before or on the day of the hearing the very same parent says to you know i think i was overtaken by emotions uh i think we need to forget about this matter we as the family have elected or chose to forgive the parents. It tells you then that he was getting money. You cannot prove it. He was getting something. The source of funding stopped. When we re-enroll, the source of funding took off again. Hence, uh, they would tell us that uh, they have res resolved the matter and they do not want us to talk to their child again so those are the some of the challenges that we come across yeah help us there has out been here, George. Uh, where some ran away. It, it just help us out on that point because I, I want us to be able to interrogate that point and interrogate effectively if parents are failing to bring those that violated their children to book because the parents are benefiting financially as to your point from the very said perpetrators what recourse what intervention mechanism is there, especially by you, the South African Council for Educators, to intervene in such matters? Because if the parents are allegedly selling their souls for a buck at the expense of their children, surely you guys need to come in on board and do something about it, right? Unlike the 
Criminal Procedure Act, which uh, would grant certain powers to the prosecution and the police. The South African Council for Educators Act does not give us uh, those powers, unfortunately. So in such instances, there has been instances where we would uh, report such to the police, but uh, as it would happen, when the police get to the perpetrator, they would just be told that uh, the person who was here is mad. We never said there's a problem anyway. So it, 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 it becomes a, a, a problem. It exists, it happens, and we do not really have recourse. Yeah, I'm struggling with this, George, and we're struggling with it from a perspective of just now we released results around how 23,000 kids between the ages of 10 um, and 19 were, were pregnant, right? Of These teenagers were pregnant. Somebody got these kids pregnant, and if you're saying that there's no recourse, that means that we've got a bunch of perpetrators who are educators who can possibly re-offend and violate other kids walking around in the schooling system, and just because they've got a measly 2,500 rand, then that they don't get brought into account. Is there any way of work, working with law enforcement, with you as a council for educators, with schools, maybe the school governing body, so that there's some kind of intervention here? Because by the sounds of this conversation that you and I are having, it sounds like we're failing our children and we are failing them dismally. I like the last part when, we, when you say we're failing our children and we're failing them dismally. And I'll say it from a parent's perspective to say, indeed, we are. If we as parents accept uh, bribes, sell our children's souls, how are we going to explain them tomorrow? The problem is you may have the SGB supportive, but as I said, you need a parent. We're dealing with minors here. Three, I mean, seven years, eight years, nine years, and so forth. You need parental uh, consent to interview them, to even have them in a disciplinary hearing. But if the very parents say to you, you cannot speak to my child, or they say to you, nothing has happened, and the very, uh, anyway, even before you get to the child, you need to go through the, the, the parent. And as I said, in the past, we have been to law enforcement to say, please look into this matter. When they arrive at your house, you as the parent are the first one to say, the person who came here must have been smoking something because we don't know what it is that he is talking about. You cannot torture them to disclose. So these things do happen if it were a, a criminal case. At least you've got a son affidavit and you can go thereby to an extent. You can hold someone accountable to say, but I think you are committing perjury here, but mm -hmm. our act doesn't allow us. It doesn't give us those powers. It would have been uh, great if we were working on affidavits. However, we work on complaints, some of which are complaints from the media. For example, as uh, the media reports of what happens in schools, cases of such a nature become says cases. We take them on and begin to investigate them. If it is a newspaper article, we take the newspaper, newspaper article, says becomes the complainant, and we begin to investigate those. And you have to go to parents when you arrive. They say, we don't know what you're talking about. Or my child is too traumatized. You cannot yeah. talk to them. Yeah. Come back uh, a year later, six months later. So those are the challenges we come across. They exist. The so George, just to interject, just to interject are... there, which provinces are um, most affected by these realities that you are bringing to light? Um, where All are provinces. we seeing the provinces that, that would see this? All provinces. All... All, all provinces, without uh, pointing left or right, the trend has been the same. Mm -hmm. But 
this no, George, we must fun. point left or right. Well, especially uh, when it comes to this particular conversation, uh, it's okay for you to point left or right. If it's KwaZulu Natal, say it's KwaZulu Natal. If it's the Eastern Cape, Gauteng, say it's Gauteng. Because otherwise, we allow these uh, uh, atrocities, and this is exactly what it is it's an atrocity. We allow these atrocities to persist, and we don't intervene because we want to be diplomatic about the matter. So if you had to point in the direction of it, where, where are those problems? Where are those problem areas? Oh, when I said without pointing left or right, I said I didn't want to leave anyone out. It happens in all provinces. And what we found is the people who are affected are mostly hungry people. That is what's said. Mm. So there is a, 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 the problem is much bigger than what we see on a daily basis. They are hungry. Those children have to eat tonight. Hence, they would sell their souls sad as it is. We cannot afford to operate in silos. Who can join us in this battle? There comes a time when we then have to say, uh, social development, it's about time we need to start talking seriously. The reason why I say this is because we have established that it's more the vulnerable children, hungry children, who go by and accept these bribes. I've already said, you can't prove it, mm. you know it's there. George, it's a very sober there conversation that you and I have just had. I have to leave it there for this evening, unfortunately. And thank you so much for your time and shedding some light in terms of some of those realities that we're dealing with as a country. George Murasi from the South African Council for Education.